Footprints from Tanzania. Now, there's a couple of things you can tell about these. First off, they are very clearly human. This is a mould, uh, a cast from the ones that were discovered there. Very definitely human. You can see the big toe, you can see the straight feet. Um, so, not in accordance to hominid footprints, which have very high curvature of the toes. So, this wasn't made by Lucy, it wasn't made by any of the Australian oh. Bethesines. The other thing to point out is that these could have been made yesterday. They're dated to 3.5 million years old because the footprints have to be 3.5 million years old in accordance to the evolutionary theory. There's no way of actually dating this because it's not part of a stratigraphic sequence. It doesn't come in the laying, it's a volcanic ash. Lucy became an almost instant celebrity in anthropological circles. She didn't look like anything we had ever found before. She was something very different. And because of that, she opened up for us an entire new chapter on human origins. Lucy turned old predictions upside down. It was thought the missing link would be a smart ape that walked on all fours. Here was the skeleton of a creature that looked like it could walk like us, but with many ape-like features. The ape that stood up, it was a revolutionary idea. We needed Owen Lovejoy's expertise again, because the evidence wasn't quite adding up. The knee looked human, but the shape of her hip didn't. Superficially, her hip resembled a chimpanzee's, which meant that Lucy couldn't possibly have walked like a modern human. But Lovejoy noticed something odd about the way the bones had been fossilized. When I put the two parts of the pelvis together that we had, this part of the pelvis has pressed so hard and so completely into this one that it caused it to be broken into a series of individual pieces which were then fused together in later fossilization. After Lucy died, some of her bones lying in the mud must have been crushed or broken, perhaps by animals browsing at the lake shore. Uh, this has caused the two bones, in fact, to fit together so well that they're in an anatomically impossible position. The perfect fit was an illusion that made Lucy's hip bones seem to flare out like a chimp's. But all was not lost. Lovejoy decided he could restore the pelvis to its natural shape. He didn't want to tamper with the original, so he made a copy in plaster. He cut the damaged pieces out and put them back together the way they were before Lucy died. It was a tricky job, but after taking the kink out of the pelvis, it all fit together perfectly, like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. As a result, the angle of the hip looks nothing like a chimp's, but a lot like ours. Anatomically, at least, Lucy could stand like a human. The case for our earliest ancestor walking upright was growing stronger, and Lucy wasn't the only evidence. Around the same time, another remarkable fossil was found by a team working in Tanzania, led by Mary Leakey. It was a mysterious footprint. Three and a half million years ago, a volcano erupted a thousand miles from Hadar near a place called Lytoli in Tanzania. Over the weeks, it threw tons of ash into the air that repeatedly blanketed the landscape.
By a stroke of good fortune, the eruption took place at the beginning of the rainy season. As the rain set in, the ash became muddy and covered with animal prints. A bird picked its way across the ground, followed by a scurrying African hare. Then as time passed, another creature arrived that left prints we would all recognize. Eventually, all these prints were covered by ash from another eruption and preserved forever as they hardened into rock. Three and a half million years later, Mary Leakey's expedition uncovered this trail. There were footprints from at least two individuals, apparently walking side by side. The unusual chemistry of the volcanic ash was like plaster, preserving the prints as a series of detailed molds and casts in solid rock. Evidence like this would delight a forensic scientist like Owen Lovejoy. The analysis of footprints from a crime scene can be vital in identifying a suspect. How different were those ancient footprints in Lytoli from ones like these? There's no better evidence than that provided by a footprint. That's what makes the Lytoli print so exciting, because they give us a direct record of how our ancestors walked almost four million years ago. When we compare the Lytoli print to that of a chimpanzee, the difference is immediately obvious. The chimpanzee, which is a quadruped, but occasionally a biped, still has a free great toe. And that great toe extends out away from the foot and leaves a very distinct mark. On the other hand, when we compare the Lytoli print to that of a, a crime scene human print, they're virtually indistinguishable. The great toe is in line with the rest of the toes. And what this has done in the human and the Lytoli print is to create an arch. And that's a hallmark of typical modern upright locomotion because the arch is an energy absorber. And that's the kind of fine tuning that you would expect in a biped that had been that way for a very long period of time. So a picture of Lucy and her kind begins to emerge. They were strong walkers. Like us, they could keep going all day long, probably in search of food. <laughs> 